Hi there. I'm very excited about my guest, but before I get to my guest, I have a little message from our sponsor. Hi there. I just discovered this amazing curricula called IQ Weather. Why the weather? Well, the weather is something we can touch and feel and understand. But more than that, it's actually a combination of, a mul of multiple different sciences, like um, physics, chemistry, geology, geography, oceanography, astronomy, and tectonics. In fact, meteorology is actually the combination of all of those sciences. So why did they create IQ Weather? To roll all those sciences into one easy and fun curriculum that kids can understand. They can go at their own pace and you'll be amazed at how much they learn and how much they retain because it's actually something that's meaningful to them. So go to IQ Weather today, IQWeather.com, and don't forget to use the promo code SAM for a 15% discount, okay? IQWeather.com with the promo code SAM. All right, thanks for listening and enjoy studying science. Hi there, I'm Sam Sorbo. This is the Sam Sorbo Show. I'm welcoming to the show somebody I've known for many, many years. I met this woman years ago at an anti-human trafficking event and um, we've reconnected over the years. She is the producer of one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. And she is also here to talk about human trafficking. My guest is Annie Lobert. She's the founder of Hookers for Jesus and also the pink chair, but I prefer her just as, to be known as Annie Lobert, which actually rhymes with pink chair when you think about it, Annie. Welcome to the show. Oh yeah, that sure does, Sam. I love it. Nice to see you again. I Annie love Lobert your cards today. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Hookers, hookers for Jesus is a pretty catchy, uh, it's a catchy term, right? So why don't you take totally. us a little bit into there, the genesis of that, and um, and we'll talk about how we met and what, you're, what you've been up to. Yeah, so that name came to me when I was driving. I was actually leaving church, and I know this sounds super Christianese, which I don't want it to, but I remember that the first four disciples that Jesus called, remember, they were fishermen. So the vice officers and the police and my ex trafficker, the pimp used to call me a hoe hooker, whore, all that, just the worst names possible. And I heard a little voice in my head. You're my hooker for Jesus. Like you're my little fisher woman. And, and literally I got the term in my head, hooker for Jesus, hookers for Jesus. And then I heard fishing for people that are drowning in the dark waters of sex trafficking. And it, it just stuck. And if you look up the name hooker in the, uh, it's the actual, gosh, it's the day, the Dutch in the Dutch, they had a boat in Dutchland and the boat's called the hooker. And it's actually a fishing boat, the same size as the, the disciples used to fish. And the same one that Jesus was probably in when it was a stormy see happening to them and he walked on water so hookers for jesus is very near and dear to me because it really literally means what it says yeah. we are I, hookers for jesus i will tell you the first time i heard it it hooked me uh and of course <laughs> so i met annie at this event that um that was anti-trafficking before anybody really knew much of anything about trafficking and certainly didn't coordinate or or uh, you know consider trafficking to, to be affiliated in any way with pornography or or even or even prostitution right right totally that was, it, that was sort of new territory you produced a film called uh traffic control you know i don't know about that film um there were so many that i've been in sam to be honest with you there's been several that i've produced but i don't remember the name of it that okay. one in particular but there's been you know hooker saved on the strip that was something that I was part of producing. And that was a three-part series documentary about our work and what we do at the Destiny House and now the Dream House, because we have two safe houses now and three apartments. So we've grown. But this all came out of my own personal experience. And you're talking to a survivor right now. And I call myself a champion survivor because I don't consider myself a victim anymore of trafficking because I have overcame that a long time ago. And now 20 years of advocacy, this is what I do on a daily basis. Well, tell I us help women. Tell us the, the genesis. Tell us how, uh, not, not necessarily how you got started, but where you were and then how you got saved out of that life. Right. 
It's so good to talk about that part because that's the most important piece. When someone gets pulled into trafficking, it's a very sketchy situation usually, but here's what's tricky. Usually the person being trafficked, you know your trafficker, you know your pimp, you've known them for a while. So this was my boyfriend. He was someone I trusted, I was so in love with. I believed that he was basically gonna help me get a business started. I wanted to have my own jewelry store and I love diamonds and gold and different gems and things like that. So he saw that like need and want inside me, but the most important thing that he saw was my vulnerabilities, which was my insecurities and me not believing that I was good enough. My father and my mother, domestic violence relationship, it was horrible. My dad used to beat my mom in front of us kids. And then I was abused when I was eight years old from the next door neighbor. And that just led into this catapulted type of, just this promiscuous lifestyle into my teens. And then finally, when I graduated high school, I took off, I was 18 and I was working three jobs. I wanted to go to college, never could afford going to college. We weren't wealthy. My dad spent all his money on antiques. He had an antique addiction. Long story short, I went to a nightclub one night and my girlfriend and I met these two guys. They were sitting at the bar. They looked like they had money. And my girlfriend starts dating one of the guys. The next thing I know, two weeks later, I'm on a plane. It might have been two months. I just can't remember the time frame because it was so long ago. I was on a plane to Hawaii and I got sold in Hawaii. But Sam, here's the part that's crazy. I chose to sell myself. My girlfriend was with a trafficker, but we didn't even know he was a trafficker because at that time he wasn't taking her money. He was letting her keep the money. Then I get back to Minnesota where I'm originally from. I quit all three of my jobs started working at the strip club. I was working escort services for a little bit, but I almost got killed. And that's where I met my boyfriend, inside a strip club. He was a bona fide trafficker pimp. And I brought him with me to Las Vegas. After a couple months of dating him, he moved in with me, it was really fast. This is a warning, ladies, for all of you out there that you're dating. If someone moves in that relationship so fast, you can't even blink your eyes. Hi there, Sam Sorbo here. As you've probably noticed, YouTube has been very busy censoring the content that I produce. So I encourage you to please join me over on Rumble. You can subscribe there and get up to date with everything that I'm putting out there and sharing with our larger community. Please join me on rumble.com. Thanks.